Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, she's fucking so good. That is insane. It's insane. It's just so good. This video is very kindly sponsored by DistroKid. I'll be talking about them more later in the video. Hello, welcome to this video. My name's Dan, aka Lucent, and Molto Mami, Molto Mami, Molto Mami. And today I'm going to be reacting to the new songs for Rosalia's Molto Mami Plus. So let's go. Cool. Hello guys, welcome back Rosalia fans, she's got some new songs for us to listen to. I, uh, like, <laughs> reacting to Mortal Mummy was a big moment for me, big moment for the channel, Jesus Christ, that video is at 70,000 views, like, <sighs> that is actually, it's like top five of my videos of all time, I never thought that like a Spanish language video would be something that people would want from my channel, but there we go. There it is. So we've got a few new songs to listen to today. Uh, from the first album, there were just some absolutely just inspirational moments. Songs that I wouldn't have necessarily thought I would enjoy on paper, because they're not necessarily like within genres that I usually listen to, listen to, but like I absolutely loved. Like Bizo Cachita and Janice as well. Like, oh my god. I mean that one more on paper is a bit more my vibe, but that song is just so glorious. Oh, and Sakura, I love Sakura. Hentai as well. Oh my god, like loads of these songs ended up on my like listening playlist over the summer and stuff And it's just like been such a like amazing discovery for me Um, what an in what an incredible artist so incredibly creative and different and unique and I'm finding so much attention for it as well I love that like, you know, she's creating weird ass music and getting loads and loads of attention for it And it's brilliant. Um, it feels like authenticity and artistry are coming back to the forefront of pop and this is, you know, I'm here for it. So, new songs today. <laughs> um, as always, I will be reacting and then looking up the English lyric translation so I can understand what the song's really about. That's what my channel is all about. Um, I love songwriting, I love making music myself. I'm a producer, so I'm a singer, songwriter person. And that's kind of my perspective going into this. And so if you are new and you like the sound of that, then make sure to subscribe to the channel and make sure to check out my original Mutter Mummy reaction as well. Um, and if you want to support me a little bit extra, you can do on Patreon. There's a number of ways you can support me. There's even like a one pound tier if you just want to give me a little tip. <laughs> the support on Patreon means the world to me. It's really making my life as like a freelancer a little bit more manageable. This video has very kindly been sponsored by DistroKid and today I'm going to be talking about their new service called DistroVid. Oh, how exciting. If you haven't heard of DistroKid, they're a music distribution service where you can get your music onto iTunes, Spotify, Apple Music, etc. And so DistroVid is now a way for you to actually distribute your music videos in the same way um, so that you can get your music videos onto Apple Music, onto Vivo, onto Tidal and onto Amazon Music as well. As with DistroKid, it is actually enabling you to be an independent artist and you're keeping control and you're keeping all the money. DistroVid offers unlimited video uploads and you can easily set a custom release date and the fact that it's on Vivo is actually quite a big deal because it means that you can get the Vivo watermark on your video, making it seem, you know, that extra level of professional. If you want to sign up for Distro Kid, you can do via my VIP link. It is right here and the link is in the description. Um, and then you can also check out Distro Vid on the website while you're there and see if that's something that you'd also like to use and be a part of and utilize as a service. Right, let's get onto this video. I'm excited to hear these new songs. I don't know how many, how many, how many there are. But I haven't heard the one that she released like last month because it says thank you Despacha. I'm not going to do like the remixes and the live versions and stuff. I'll just do the new songs. Aislamiento, La Quilia, Lax and Chiri. Six new songs. So let's go. Okay, so let's start with thank you. <laughs> I don't know what this, this might not actually even be a song. So we'll <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, whatever. We're going to listen to it. Okay, cool. Let's go. Oh, I literally turned that up. Hola, soy la Rosalía. He heard Motomami. Así que muchas gracias por escucharlo. También, bueno... Lol. As if that's like a whole track. Her like trying to do a thank you video, having it way too quiet. I literally was like turning up on my laptop like... Am I playing this through my phone? What have I done? Um, <laughs> and then her just dropping the phone at the end. She's like 
Like, it really feels like her personality is so, like, whimsical, a little bit chaotic. I'm here for it. I checked out her, uh, did you see the, I can't, who was the person who does the chicken shop? But she did one with Rosalia, and Rosalia on it was just, like, so magnetic. Like, you can see that, like, her brain is, like, always firing on all cylinders with this kind of artistry, you know? And so that was, like, a really cute little thing. It just kind of shows you a bit more of her personality, doesn't it? Okay, let's go on to the next one. This is Despacha, which was the single that she released ahead of it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. I was not expecting like a like a musical theater song. <laughs> nice. The vibes of this are really satisfying, really moving my body. Like the kind of like rhythmic textures going on are so satisfying and so well put together. Nice! And the rhythm is just the breaths. Oh, so cool. Oh, shit. Oh. This is sick. Yeah. Oh, this is so good. I love this. Nice. I love that the movement between different places that she's so not afraid to completely take the song to a different place but it still feels so cohesive, you know, it's like really f***ing cool. Oh, oh. Oh, this has got such a groove to it. Mmm. I fucking love this. Just the syncopation is just off the charts. It's got so much of a personality in it as well. This song has a lot of joy to it as well, you know. Nice. Dispatcha. God, that was really good. That was so good. What a kind of like, oh God, I just love like the rhythm of it was just so in your body. You know, it's so satisfying to listen to. And I loved the piano because it was really simple, but not like obvious you know, like really, really syncopated, like so, so rhythmic in its, in its approach. Um, but I love that, that the chords didn't go exactly where you expected them to go. They went to a neat, slightly more like kind of minor place. So I had this really sense of groove and rhythm to it and a kind of sense of joy to it. But the chords themselves had a kind of a bit of a touch of the minor, a bit of touch of darkness, so a really kind of deep kind of thing going on there. I love that, I adore that. Let's look at the lyrics. I've learned this the hard way that I should actually Google the title of the of the song. <laughs> to send off, yeah, to dispatch. Okay, cool. Baby, don't call me, I'm busy forgetting your ills. I'm going out tonight with all my motto mummies, with my all my ladies. Motto mummy, motto mummy. Am I spiteful? Whoa, out of my mind. I came with a new flow, it hacks. I move him side to side and side to side. Today I go with my crowned disco baby and I'm spiteful. Whoa, out of my mind. God forbid I go back to you. I move him side to side and side to side. Today I go out with my crowned disco baby. So it seems as if she's like going out to forget this guy. Maybe the kind of like, that was why the music has a kind of sense of the minor. Because she's talking about like, trying to forget somebody who's wronged her. Maybe the chords are representing these kind of intrusive thoughts, whereas like, the rhythm is her out and dancing and trying to shake off those demons, you know. I go with skirt, hoops and chains, pina colada, I'm not embarrassed. I'm with La Fefa, she's the boss, she dances it, she teaches me. Today she doesn't work, she's turned the fame fuck the job the night is long really a like a sense of letting go yeah so like sending off like dispatching your like responsibilities and the guy who fucked you off letting it all go and letting and going out and having a good time i'm going 180 because i'm a girl racer what you get distracted and i already passed you on the right oh yeah what distract it yeah it's cool i love the mixture of like this kind of element of dance but also kind of the dark side of it is too it's really illustrates what she's trying to talk about, you know? Oh, that was so good. I'm definitely adding that to my current playlist. Okay, let's go on to the next one. This is Aislamiento. My Spanish is getting better every day. I mean, I probably did that completely wrong, but there we go. <laughs> it's just like the wind. Oh. oh God, I love her voice. Wow. I also love the really kind of harsh production on her vocal with such a quiet, soft background. It's really enticing. Mm. If 
fabulous. This is so cool. I just like, I'm so excited by the production choices she makes. Oof. Soft and like synthy and like, like a big pad wash thing. But then all the rhythmical stuff is so dry and like raspy. And her voice is very rhythmic. Staccato. Oof. This is great. Mm. I love how she creates rhythm almost like in the suggested rhythm, you know? Oh. She doesn't like fill her songs like full of rhythmic moments and instead like almost insinuates the rhythm with like sparse bits of rhythm thrown in. Very cool. Oh. Oh, she's f***ing glorious. Oh. oh, my God. Oh. Oh, my God. She's so f***ing so good. Oh, got chills. Wow. Oh. This is the f***ing coolest shit. <laughs> I love it so much. She's just like completely just diving into her artistry with no restrictions. Fuck me. That's insane. It's insane. It's just so good. I, oh my God, it just feels like it takes you on such a journey without, you know, I don't even know the f***ing lyrics, you know. Oh my God. I just thought it was just so inspired to kind of create this wash of like kind of atmospheric pad and then to have this like very forward placing staccato produced vocal over the top it really kind of pushes it just creates such a kind of sharp kind of dichotomy between what the vocal's doing and what the background's doing it's so interesting and then like all the rhythmic textures and stuff crashed through this like big wash of sound to have this kind of dirty raspy kind of rhythmic elements that weren't overdone it left so much space and i think that's kind of what was so inspiring about that song was how much space was left and used and created such such a unique atmosphere and then like the middle section where she just kind of took it all away and then just framed her stunning stunning vocals as voice is just so beautiful and she frames it so beautifully i just think it's just so inventive she's so in tune with how to tell a story in a way that's so instinctual that like she doesn't overthink anything it feels like she does she hasn't overthought this needs to be you know in like this form this needs to be you know in this kind of format she's just doing things that intrigue her and she follows that and she manages to create something that takes you on this kind of instinctual journey and i just adore it and it's so inventive and so captivating and so unique to listen to and on top of that her voice is just so gorgeous it's just all these layers ah oh, it's so so fabulous and it's so nice to hear an artist who is just so free Free and like just like you can see that they're just at the pinnacle of their like inspiration you know to be creating these extra songs that didn't even make it onto the onto the first album and for them to so far be like so inspired is like I can just feel that she's there she's really in that moment for her artistry and it's fabulous to hear oh god it's so wonderful she's amazing let's look at the lyrics Aislamiento isolation oh shit okay so the wash the pad it's like the background of her feelings and the isolation her isolated vocal in the middle of that is like it's all illustrated oh she's great oh my god she's such i just love it she's so fucking good i'm obsessed i leave the hotel i'm accompanied by three hooding and the glasses and like that no one sees me okay yeah so okay so this is a song about maybe like referencing her fame i feel invisible the car tinted my hit dies flash and the heart accelerated i get close to the press tmz on my back we leave it behind gucci flip-flops i check the ops cloud monet if she's happy i don't know knives that cut satin I'm not sure what that's referring to. Presumably, maybe she's going to a museum or something and trying to do it, like, in disguise so that people don't recognise her. Does she like being invisible or does she not? You know? That's kind of the thing, isn't it? It is the empire that destroys, the empress that builds it, 
Alone in the mirage, I go with no entourage. I believe that the world's mine. If a teardrop falls, God forgive me for taking for granted so many blessings. It's like this really complex feeling of her, like, she's going through fame and having to kind of deal with fame. And she's kind of beating herself up. It's a very kind of complex thing because, like, there's always going to be these downsides to fame. You know, it's much documented. Um, And yet she feels guilty for that because she has managed to find so much success with her music and with her passion and so she feels guilty for feeling bad but I don't think she should I think you know like there's always gonna be two sides to everything it doesn't matter how much you get there's always gonna be something else there and you should feel okay to feel that way you know yes be grateful for what you have received but like that doesn't mean you shouldn't feel bad when you feel bad because like it's an unfortunate side effect of success in being an artist you know there's a war between me and the world i don't want you to think i'm proud of it wow so she's trying to maybe communicate to her audience that like she's had to build up a wall between her and the world for her own protection and her own sanity but it's not something that she's proud of it's not something that she's happy about you know i love it gorgeous just was stunning i absolutely adored that such a kind of complex story the way in which it's produced and arranged like completely tells that doesn't it it really just feels like every element of it is is trying to tell you this story of of her feeling isolated yeah it's gorgeous oh stunning i think that's like as a you know as a producer i always like push towards my production always being a part of the storyline of the song and that's like the role of production in my songs isn't necessarily to make people move isn't necessarily to like sound cool it's to tell the story what i want people to understand and take away from my song and i can sense that that's exactly what she does with this with absolutely no limits let's go on to the next one this is la quilie what time signature is this it's like tripping isn't it I have no idea what type of signature this is. <laughs> it's very like sparse production. Very cool. Very choppy. <laughs> I have no idea. Is it 10 beats in a bar? <laughs> I don't know. It's cool though. Very cool. Very unique. Yeah, okay, maybe that's where I'm supposed to be taking this rhythm. Like my brain can't quite figure out where I'm supposed to be as a rhythm. It really makes you think, it really makes you pay attention. Cool. So, like, staccato, isn't it? Like, really cool. I love how she really plays with this idea of rhythm in a way that is so... It is very playful, isn't it? Like, I... It was at the end of that song, still hadn't figured out maybe like what what time signature it was in. Like I had no idea. It felt like there was kind of no grounding to it, which was really quite fascinating to this too, because it kind of it stopped you from ever resting. You know, it really made you kind of feel as if you were always kind of waiting. You know, so it's quite an interesting like place to take it, and then like to really like take it, make it such an interesting rhythm and time and signature and whatever. Um, and then to make it super sparse and staccato and uh, snappy, like all those kinds of things, I think was really cool. And really sold that vision of this kind of tripping on, tripping upon itself kind of rhythm. Yeah, even like down to like the, the way that the vocal was just so choppy. It's like every single bit of quiet was taken out of the song, so out of the vocal, so that her vocal was like, yeah, 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 you know, it's almost like that. Um, really lends itself to that vision. You know, I think that like as an artist, it's quite difficult to maybe as a singer as well. It's quite difficult to go into your songs and like, like I feel this pressure to kind of as a singer be always singing at my best in all my songs, you know. And I think that she's relinquished that, especially between El Mal Quere and this one. It feels like she's just like let go of that expectation of herself and allows her vocal production to be whatever it needs to be for the song you know you know obviously she's a trained vocalist so it's like i can imagine feeling the pressure to try and you know sing out on every single song and i love that she just follows the art of the song follows what the song needs to be and doesn't worry about her own kind of ego you know in that sense i could use a bit of that it's so difficult to get that kind of perspective when it's your voice that you're hearing. Let's have a look at the lyrics. Lucky, yeah. No, I don't want Kylie Minogue. <laughs> There's a different website. Genius is not up to date. Okay. Ah la la, ki la ki la ki la ki la. 
Rumba, are you not here? Where is it to break? I signed the court with enamel brooch. Sink to the grave. Grave, grave. Ooh, some kind of legal thing? They throw the carnations from the balconies. I'm sold out like Alice in the country of Chanel. Tell me the hours to do the pins nailed. But there is no atelier. Atelier? What's an atelier? I love all the kind of Alice in Wonderland kind of references there, you know. Um, throwing out the carnations and the clock and everything. And then tea. I want my cup of tea, matcha tea. I want my name marked. I cut that road with ma with a machete. The captain of the sea, the waves break in the north. From the last century, come and see how it's put in. I don't know what this is about. Maybe it is just a f like she's kind of trying to create this feeling of being lost. It's certainly confusing. I mean, Alice was lost in Wonderland, wasn't she? Maybe it's like trying to like find her identity again. Because she, like, she's talking about feelings of feeling like she's sold out. Clocks that tell me the hours to do. Maybe, yeah, it seems to be that she's really just trying to swim through, like, these ideas of her artistry, who she is now that she's found success, maybe. You know, like, you know, shopping in Chanel, feeling like she's sold out, like, feeling like she's, you know, working on music, but there's no space in which for her to do that, like... I've cut that road. I've, I've made my made my name for myself. It's it feels like an exploration. Um, let me know what you think that that song is about because that is yeah not very clear cut, is it? Not clear cut with a machete. Lol. Okay, let's go on to the next song. This is Lax or maybe L A X. Maybe this is a cover of Rachel Stevens. No one's gonna get that reference, but there we go. <laughs> mm. God, I love my voice. <laughs> Sounds like it was recorded just in a room. Maybe it's recorded in LAX. Ooh, I love the kind of bounciness of the vocal as well. Mm. Again, like implied rhythm. Ooh. Oh my god, I love that pad. Give it to me. Oh. Wow. Cool. Wow. Oh my god. That was very, like, yeah. I like my first thought was maybe she was like recording it into her phone in, you know, maybe an airport. <laughs> but then it kind of built up. It had like so much more going on to it. Some, and I loved the use of sound and texture in that. Like it really, again, like really showing her like having absolutely no restraints on her vision artistically. Like it's just a little bit, it's just a little vocal that she was almost, yeah, like singing off the cuff. And then she just kind of built it up. You know, I just loved the sound of the the pads and, and the drums and stuff. Like, the textures of those were really lovely and, like... Like, lovely is not the word. They're, like, kind of guttural, like... You know, that... <laughs> you know what I mean? That kind of sound. Really fascinates us, too. The kind of thing that makes me think, I want to make a sound like that. You know, like, how would I create that sound? You know? Very cool. Love it. Let's look at the lyrics. I trust my worst enemy more than you. Paris match, Multamami, Multamami, Louis bag, Louis Vuitton, presumably. Um, I have the yard that you will not have, but you have everything that I lost. Wow. Someone new wants something from me. Many more knives in the VIP. Nights alone and my party crew. This is how Ferraris crash. Nights alone with my party. Hardly anyone sees what I lost. Pretty for my flex. Never pretty for my ex. Oh, shit. Jet lag on my Rolex, paparazzi roll, roller flex. It feels heavy, it feels heavy, it feels heavy. The light's for me, the light's for me. I wanted it for me, I had it for me. It feels heavy. Before they burn me, let me out. Shit, this is quite dark, fuck. I'm not sure who she's talking to at the beginning. I trust my, my worst enemy more than you. Maybe she's talking to herself. Oof. Seems as if maybe she's like comparing herself to somebody else and kind of thinking I have things like the the Louis Vuitton bag and whatever and I'm this multi mummy woman I have things that you don't have but you have everything that I lost it's like she's looking at the sacrifices she made for her art for her art and being famous and being a successful artist and now it feels like as her fame is growing more people want stuff from her there's more knives in the VIP area there's more threats there's like you know the more she's successful the more she feels threatened 
god nights alone and my particle this is how ferrari's crash it's like she's looking at all the kind of the dark sides of fame and kind of fearing that for herself there's a lot of there's fear isn't there there's a lot of fear but nobody sees what i've lost you know everybody just sees what i've gained they don't see all the things i've had to sacrifice for that you know like a normal life that lyric the pretty for my flex but never pretty for my ex it's like the idea that she's maybe writing songs about her ex and like using that experience for her own success like there's a lot of guilt and then she's looking at like you know having a rolex and whatever jet lag on my rolex it's like that idea of time that idea of like being tired and being behind time being like not in time with the world and the rolex being that symbol of wealth you know there's like so much kind of darkness and juxtaposition in these in this it's really fascinating and then this last bit is so direct to the point like these lights the the fame this thing it is heavy i feel it on me and i need some sort of release and some sort of escape before it burns me i go too far great really good amazing before we go into the final song if you are new and this is your first video of mine um then obviously you're enjoying it so make sure to subscribe to the channel and if you are not new to the channel then make sure to check out my patreon too basically there's a whole bunch of stuff you can get on there for extra you can get videos uncut you can get videos early you get early access to them you can also request any song reaction or even a full album as well on there and i will do that for you any reaction you want so that is all on the patreon you can click through to the link the link is in the description right let's go on to the next one let's go on to the final one this is Cheery. Mm. Nice. I love that vocal sample in the background. Mm. <laughs> mm. Oh. <laughs> God, she loves that, doesn't she? She's completely fucking with you. Yeah. A voice, nice, wow. oh. It's this like mixture of like harshness and softness. It's really cool. I mean, she did it throughout the original album too. I love it. Oh. And it's like moments of utmost tenderness in songs that are otherwise kind of harsh. I love it. Amazing. Oh my god. <laughs> mm. <laughs> wow amazing again like so fascinating to listen to i just for me she brings this like experimental production to a place that is so like listenable and i don't know what like because it is really out there like when you listen to like what's going on and how it changes throughout the song and how she like messes with your expectations and stuff you would think it wouldn't be such easy listening but it is somehow I, maybe it's her voice that brings it together and her rhythm and the her melodies and things I, I, it's got to be right because it is really experimental but it doesn't feel unattainable it's that real sweet spot it's really just yeah so cool i loved the kind of juxtapositions in there these moments of like real harshness in the drums and everything and and the bass like and the 808 kind of vibe but like then s switching completely like dry switching into falsetto and piano it's like gorgeous yeah and those moments of ten tenderness like punctuate a uh, feeling of jaggedness <laughs> you know um <laughs> which come as like a kind of welcome break from that sound but also kind of illustrate the tender moments you know because they are so surprising and so like surrounded by darkness you know everyone wants fortune cash and liberty but asking you, it's not useless. I found reasons I've seen the moon. And you lied for what? I made a jump of faith. You waited outside the mercer for my autograph. Forgive me, whoever I think is under my mercy. Doing it my way all around the world. It's not bad faith. And I sleep with the hoodie you made for me. It has my name painted on its chest. I wanted to sleep and they stole my sleep. Now tell me. You're already obsessed. I'm heroin. You're already hooked. I'm cocaine. The streets are in love, in love with me, and I'm in love, in love with the streets. So I guess, like, in terms of the, like, context there, right, she... So the rest of these songs are all about her, like, dealing with fame and dealing with, like, a lot of 
troubled feelings. And this one maybe seem, seems to be focusing on her kind of intense connection with her fans. She talk about them being obsessed with her like she's a drug, but then she is just as obsessed with them, you know? It's that kind of dependent relationship where it's like, this is great, but also is it? Because, you know, there's that idea of it being compared to heroin, you know? She's never one for like stating things and them having a clear meaning. The words that she chooses are like always have some kind of like context and hidden kind of idea of it not all being perfect and beautiful, you know? It's like there's layers to the words that she chooses, which I think is so, so good. Cool, right? Thank you so much for tuning into this video. God, some amazing songs. Like, like the album was already phenomenal and then to just kind of be like oh yeah here's like you know like five more songs that like and some of them were just stunning among the best ones from Motor Mummy as well like god astonishing stuff amazing inspiring stuff and it just makes me want to make more music let me know what you think of these new songs in the comments and let me know what your interpretations of all the lyrics are too um i think that's something that i find very interesting and like i love on this channel is that like I can see everybody else's, everybody comments being like, I think it's about this, I think it's about this. And actually, you know, it's not my native language, so a bit of insight would be much appreciated. So thank you. Cool. Uh, before we sign off, a special thank you to my patrons. Their name's coming up on screen now. Um, they support me um, and they get a whole bunch of stuff, including early access, unedited videos, and some of them actually get song requests and album requests too. So if you do want to sign up for Patreon, if you want to support me and get your name in the credits, then the link is on the screen right now. Cool. Right. Thank you for tuning into this video. I will see you next week for another one. Cool. Bye.